Thank you, Kincorla. Uh, Minister, first of all, I, I know that in, I think it was last year, I brought a delegation that met you from the uh, Leitrim Tourism Network in regard to this particular issue that in the North West and in the border region in particular, they're suffering a decline in tourism. There was a 16% decline, I think, last year. Brexit is part of that problem because it, traditionally they would have relied on a lot of tourism coming from, uh, from Britain, and that is a cross-border problem that we've had in the last couple of years. But uh, at that time, you indicated that there would be additional funding in place, and I think there was additional funding allocated in the budget, but the reports I hear back from the industry on the ground is that they see little sign of the additional marketing that they required uh, to try and enhance that tourism product in the area and for to try and, 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 and pr promote the area more and to get more tourism to come into it and to try also to enhance uh, the product. So, Minister, I'd like to get some information as to how and where and what level of funding is in place and where it's been spent. The local authorities tell me they haven't seen it. Uh, the tourism network on the ground certainly say they haven't seen it. Uh, the hotels network say they haven't come across it either. And we'd like to know exactly where the additional funding is and what impact it's going to have coming into the future. Thank you. Minister. <clears throat> Thank you, Deputy, for raising this issue uh, today, and I'm grateful to you for doing so. And I applaud the fact that you're consistently on this case, which I think is a very worthy one, and I hope I'll be able to satisfy you that uh, the Northwest and the border regions are taken very seriously, in, in particularly in the realm of tourism. At the outset, I must point out that with the exception of supports for green waste projects, tourism development funding is channeled through Folger Island which is responsible for regional tourism development. Under the Tourism Action Plan 2019 to 2021, Forcha Island will continue to develop and enhance tourism experiences as part of Project Island 2040. The aim is to develop things to see and do and increase regional spread, extend the season and promote sustainable growth. This applies across the country, including to the northwest and border counties of Donegal, Sligo, Mayo, Leitrim, Cabin, Monaghan and Louth. Walsh Island does this work through the relevant tourism experience brands such as Wild Atlantic Way. These brands guide both the capital investment as well as current spending on festivals, events and marketing and other supports for the region. The North West and border counties vary in their offering to tourists and traverse a number of experienced brands. These include the Wild Atlantic Way, Islands Hidden Heartlands and Islands Ancient East. Fulcher Island is investing in the tourism in these counties through the grant scheme for large tourism projects and more recently through platforms for growth which I launched last month. The region has also received national and regional festival funding and business supports for tourism operators to respond to the challenges of Brexit as part of the package secured in last year's budget. Last July, following publication of the Strategy for the Future Development of National and Regional Greenways, Minister of State Griffin and I announced a funding call for Greenways. In response to the funding call, under that strategy, I hope to be in the position to announce awarding of funding to the successful applicants in the coming weeks. However, a number of greenways in the northwest and border regions are already being developed. These are being co-funded by the Interreg program, the Northern Ireland Department for Infrastructure, and my department. The Northwest Greenways Network project has been awarded 14.8 million. Phase two of the Ulster Canal Greenway project has received almost 5 million, and the Carlingford Lock Greenway project has been granted a total of 3.46 million. While these greenways are focusing on switching cross-border journeys from car to bicycle, there will also be tourism benefits from all these greenways. Fortier Island is also partnering with the Department of Rural and Community Development on the, on the Outdoor Recreation Infrastructure Fund 2018, which has provided funds of almost 11 million for 78 projects across 24 counties, including Leitrim, Sligo, Donegal, Cavan and Mayo. In addition, Fulcher Island is working closely with that department on the Rural Regeneration Development Fund to deliver quality visitor experiences nationwide to ensure local communities can benefit from tourism growth, both economically and socially. I'm also keenly aware of how important British visitors are to the border region and how Brexit could potentially impact on this. So the Deputy will be interested to hear that last week, Minister Griffin launched a new strategy developed by the island of Ireland's three tourism agencies to grow tourism from Britain to Ireland. The strategy aims to grow revenue from British holidaymakers by over 25% to 705 million by 2022 and will be a particular benefit to northwestern and border counties. Tourism Ireland continues to promote the northwest as far as part of its promotional program in key market, markets overseas, including the Wild Atlantic Way and Causeway Coastal Route 
and promotes direct access to the Northwest through cooperative marketing campaigns. These investments are crucial, not least because growing tourism across the country and across the seasons is a key part of the government's tourism policy, and I see great potential in this region to contribute to that ambition. Thank you, Minister. Deputy Kenny. Uh, thank you, Minister. You know, we, we have seen some developments, of course, in, in recent times, and particularly around the greenways, and they're very welcome. But there, there are two greenways, one of them in uh, the, the Sligo to Enniskillen Greenway, which we are waiting funding for. I know you uh, attended the, the ballroom or romance in Glenfarren early this year and, and, and walked a little bit of that greenway as well and had a dance with somebody there. We will not get into that one this evening. Uh, that, that, particular, that particular greenway requires additional funding and uh, would be a huge benefit because it is a cross-border project. There is also a similar one on, on the, uh, which basically runs along what was the, the Balnamore Ballyconnell Canal and runs through what was the old rail line there and similarly requires funding. But in, in a general way, one of the issues that we, we continually come across is that the tourism product in the North West, while it requires development from the point of view of infrastructure and of, of product, it also just requires a lot more promotion and sustained targeted promotion because we've seen a fall off. Uh, I spoke to someone today from the Leitrim Tourism Network and they tell me that they spoke to people right up through Donegal, right the way down in Strabane as well, they visited a hotel there, and they all talk of that this year there has been a fall off in bookings, that there's less people visiting that region. And that's the same right across the border area in the northwest in particular. And the only way to try and arrest that decline is for a targeted programme of investment in promotions and in getting the, the, the people of that area and the tourist providers in that area out to meet the people who will come and stay and contribute to that product in the area. And really they're telling me that one of the key areas for them is the continental tourist. And while I welcome the proposal you, you speak of where there's, there's an initiative about to start where you're talking about uh, increasing the, the, the British holiday makers by over 25 per cent, that's very welcome. But a lot of them are telling me that particularly in the context of Brexit, they feel that that's going to be a very difficult hill to climb and that a greater emphasis needs to be placed on the continental tourists, particularly from France and Germany, who traditionally did visit that region and have got a great potential for to try and come back again. And they know the area, they've been there before, and if we can try and work more on promotion of the, the particularly the, 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 the Wild Atlantic Way and the Hidden Heartlands, but generally in the Northwest, where we have got a tremendous product, and we need to get more tourists from continental Europe to come there. Thank you. Conclude on this matter, please. Yeah, but the, the deputy will be aware that announcements on the greenways will be coming very, very shortly, uh, and that will include announcements on whatever is happening in your particular area. I, I think that will probably come in the next two weeks. I don't want to promise that, but I, I think he can, he can anticipate that, that there will be uh, information on the, on the greenways very shortly. Um, from a total of 22 applications, I think, received from 15 local authorities on the Greenway strategy. Um, and these include, uh, from the northwestern border counties, three applications, County Donegal, one from Mayo, one for the Sligo Greenway, one, one from Leitrim County Council for the Sligo Leitrim Northern Counties Railway Greenway, one from Louth County Council for Dundalk Black Rock Greenway. There was also an application from Mead County Council for a greenway that terminates in King's Court and County Cavan. The deputy be aware of that. But, and the government takes extraordinarily seriously uh, what, what the deputy says about the North West. And I understand the, the fact that he says that some of the numbers are down. And we're very conscious of that. And we're particularly conscious, of course, of the difficulties presented to your area by Brexit. But I, th I think it should, be, uh, it should be pointed out that we have invested, apart from already uh, making commitments to the greenways. We've invested a lot of capital in the northwestern border counties, um, and these would include large grant schemes, further opportunities for Fortress Island capital support. And examples of Fortress Island capital investment in the northwestern border counties, I don't know whether the deputy needs reminding, but in Donegal, the Fanner Lighthouse experience, 469,000. In Malin, the head visitor, facilities, 396,000. In Sligo, the Strand Hill Surfing Centre of Excellent, over a million. Caramore, Neolithic Sites, 262,000. The Sligo Pontoon, 201,000. In Leitrim, Loch Rin, 250. And Glencarg, Lake and Waterfall, 162,750 in 2014. So, where, whereas the Deputy probably has a legitimate cause for 
making the case that he has, and he makes it very strongly and very well, and he makes it very strongly in the, in, in the Brexit conte context, I think it's important that the message shouldn't go out here that we have somehow got a blind spot for the North West we haven't.